This week, we honor and celebrate those we've lost with Lasso, reflect on the impact of one of MTH's most important figures, take an inside look at one of McHenry's prized publications, and we preview the fall play. All of that and more on the Warrior Weekly. Presented by Warrior Student Media, I'm Colin Chanowski. And I'm Dylan Machashek. Today we begin with one of the most colorful nights in the town of McHenry. This past Saturday, Lasso put on a show to celebrate Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead. Last Saturday, on October 30th, the Latin American Student Organization, also known as Lasso, held Dia de los Muertos at the MCHS Upper Campus. This fun and meaningful event was held in remembrance of those who have passed away in the Latinx community. President of Lasso, Jasmine Carvalho Diaz, was proud to help with the production of the event. It is usually celebrated um, to honor our past family members that have um, transitioned to the afterlife. Uh, we usually make altars where we offer them their favorite drinks, their favorite food, and we also try to do their favorite activities. Um, it also helps honor the Latinx culture and see what we celebrate and um, have a voice in this school. Thanks to all the staff and students who helped with the production, the event was a success, and Mr. Otto Corzo, the organizer of LASSO, got to spread light on the representation of the Latinx community within MCHS and our student body. Well, we have a pretty big uh, Latino population. Latinx population here, so a lot of them want to see their culture represented here at the school, and this is a great example of how uh, McHenry MCHS can help provide that space for our Latinx students. With Latin Americans being more than a quarter of students at MCHS, LASSO allows others to learn and be more open to the Latinx culture. It's representation, really. So I think providing the students with, I guess you could say, like a home kind of feel, where you can be proud of your heritage, your culture, and share that with the student body, I think that's where I come in. I want to provide them with that space. Lasso's event not only brought awareness and helped represent MCHS's Latinx population, but is a tradition held to honor those that have passed away within their community. An example of how MCHS can continue to provide a comfortable space for our Latin American students. Reporting for the Warrior Weekly were Danielle Carr, Juliana Reese, and Ruth Lakeno. Mr. Barry Burmeister has been an MCHS staple for the past 35 years and has decided to go on one last victory lap before he retires. Warrior Student Media reflects on the impact that Burmeister has made on Warrior Student athletes for decades. After 35 years in District 156, Barry Burmeister is beginning a new chapter of his life and retiring from his duties as athletic director. In his time at MCHS, he has coached many different sports and created a cultural legacy in Warrior Athletics. I've been involved in sports my entire life. I, I played three sports in high school, baseball, football, basketball. I played college baseball. Athletics has been a, a huge portion of my life for, for the entire time. His love for sports led him to his earliest role in Warrior Athletics, an assistant coach for boys basketball. He later took over as head boys basketball coach, where Rob Nemec worked under him as an assistant coach. We use the phrase in my program about being all in, use all in. The one thing that's great about working with uh, Barry Burmeister is you're always on your toes. Burmeister prides himself on consistently attending various McHenry athletic events and being an active part of the athletes' lives after high school. The most rewarding part of the job is to see some of our student athletes in their careers, some of them in athletic careers that have been successful and others that are out making the world a better place in their day-to-day -day lives. One of Burmeister's goals upon becoming athletic director was to update and replace different athletic facilities. To name a few, new basketball and volleyball courts, a new turf football field, new swimming pool, as well as a state-of-the-art weight room. My job coming in was always to leave it better than when you got here. As he moves on into retirement, Burmeister leaves behind a culture of dedication and commitment with every warrior athlete he has worked with. I think his, his legacy is going to be McHenry Athletics. Even though he will no longer work for Warrior Athletics, Burmeister still plans on attending and supporting McHenry athletes. 
I'm probably going to continue doing what I'm doing now. I'm going to continue to go to athletic events and just not worry whether the lights are going to work, whether the scoreboard's going to work, whether the teams are going to show up, whether there's going to be officials, whether we have a bus or any of that. I'm going to go and I'm going to be a spectator and I'm going to enjoy. On behalf of Warrior Student Media and all of Warrior Nation, we wish Mr. Burmeister a happy and healthy retirement and thank him for his contributions to McHenry Athletics. Reporting for the Warrior Weekly were Charlotte Alexander, Madison Harvey, and Riley Byron. In order to make Burmeister happy, try for a winter sport. Winter sport trials begin next week. Head to McHenry High School Athletics page for registration information before your trial begins. The McHenry Messenger, MCHS student newspaper, rolls out headlines weekly to inform, entertain, and investigate the ins and outs of McHenry and beyond. Where your student media has a story. The McHenry Messenger is back and better than ever at MCHS. We take a look into the inner workings of our school's newspaper. It, because we put so much work into it on a weekly basis, not even like for just the print edition, but like how consistently we post online. We put a lot of hard work into it, and it's really nice to like have people actually, you know, see it. <laughs> I'm also excited for the story Vanessa is writing about political activism because it's very prevalent in today's society, and I think it's important that we write about it because a lot of people do online activism. It's important to see what it affects, what it doesn't affect, and how it impacts everyone's little ways of life. The newspaper helps students achieve their future goals and gives them a platform to use their voices in proactive ways. My personal goal is to win state and possibly go on to nationals. Last year I came in sixth place for sports writing, so I really want to improve on that and get bigger. Mr. Erbach is an English teacher at the freshman campus. On top of that, he's also the newspaper advisor. His newspaper team is currently nominated finalists for the National Scholastic Press Association. Yeah, we were in disbelief. I was in disbelief because I was kind of scrolling the results thinking like we weren't going to be on it because we've never been on it. Even when I was the yearbook advisor for 10 years, we never made it on that list. And so when I saw that um, some other neighboring schools were on it, I was like, darn it, they're on it and we're not. And then I scrolled down a little bit more and we were on it. And I actually didn't really believe it at first. And I had to check with Mr. Stengel and see if he saw it on his side before I could believe it. So we're excited. Um, and honestly, if we don't get a pacemaker, um, which is the name of this crazy award, um, being a finalist for the pacemakers kind of is a new thing for us and is, is an honor in and of itself. Hopefully we'll have it in people's hands Thursday or Friday, but I don't really know yet. Um, it kind of depends on uh, both people in my classroom and outside of my classroom and making sure everyone's on the same page. The McHenry Messenger is soon to release their first issue sometime in the upcoming weeks. To find these articles, please visit the McHenry Messenger website. Reporting for the Warrior Weekly were Emberlyn Carlson, Grace Mueller, Lacey Thompson, and Lauren Curran. The first issue of the Henry Messenger will be out on newsstands and the entrances and libraries at both schools soon. If you are an illustrator or a photographer interested in working with the Henry Messenger, email Mr. Erbach for more information. Finally, the fall play, The Man Who Came to Dinner, is quickly approaching. Warrior Student Media dives into the rehearsals that will make it so special. The fall play, titled The Man Who Came to Dinner, is an event that MCHS is very proud to produce. Doing like the same rehearsal process um, where we're still doing um, we're still doing strike, all that business. It's pretty much the exact same. We just gotta accommodate for uh, the virus with masks. With the pandemic continuing, director Andy Hilliard explains that the show must continue no matter what. Well, if you're not familiar with the theater, we the show must go on and we figure it out. So, if that means we recast people, we recast people. If that means we have extra rehearsals, we have extra rehearsals. If that means that we do special scenes where I don't do the whole show, I just do parts of things to make sure that we do get the rehearsal time we need, then that's what we do. Going day in, day out, performing with the same group, you're bound to get close, and this group most certainly has. They're incredibly dedicated. Um, I don't think people always realize how intense it can be to be in a theater production and the time commitment that's involved in it. And it's more than just that, it's, it's being aware of your voice, being aware of your body and how you move. It's, it really is intense, so I always tell the students, theater ain't for sissies. It really isn't. Please come watch our show. Um, it's a comedy, so we have lots of laughs to share. 
You can buy tickets to the play on the posters found around both campuses. Hope to see you there on November 11th or the 12th. Reporting for the Warrior Weekly were Katherine Anderson, Abby Fitzgerald, and Gianna Barger. The fall play premieres on November 11th, and the QR code to buy tickets can be found on posters throughout both campuses. That's all for today's show. Be sure to follow the Warrior Weekly on all social media platforms, including Twitter, Insta, and TikTok. For Dylan Mashashik and all of Warrior Student Media, I'm Colin Chanowski. Have a great week, Warriors.